This video is going to look at empirical formula and molecular formula, defining those terms, but also showing you how you can calculate an empirical formula from data provided in a question using something called the grid method, and then subsequently how you can calculate a molecular formula from the deduced empirical formula. The first question to consider is what is an empirical formula? Well, I've got an example of a molecule called butene here with the formula C4H8. But consider if I wanted to explain to somebody not exactly what the formula of butene was, but instead, more simply, what proportion they might expect to find of hydrogen in the molecule relative to the amount of carbon in the form of a simple whole number ratio. Well, that would be what is known as an empirical formula. Look at the formula of butene again and consider, is there a common factor we could divide both four and eight by to produce a really simple whole number ratio? And that number will be four. If we divide both numbers by four, we get the new empirical formula, CH2. And that's telling the observer we'd expect to find twice as much hydrogen as carbon in a molecule of butene. So an empirical formula is the simplest whole number ratio of atoms of different elements that make up a molecule or compound. Now, usually in questions, you won't just be asked to give the definition of empirical formula. You'll be also asked to calculate an empirical formula from data. So here's a nice, simple example to start us off. Imagine the question said that the substance contained 48 grams of carbon, 8 grams of hydrogen and 32 grams of oxygen. And you were asked to calculate its empirical formula. You would use something called the grid method. Now, the grid method always follows the same exact pattern. You present the elements from the question in columns. You then write down the mass of those elements from the question. Now, if the question presents them as percentages rather than as masses, it's not a problem because those are percentages by mass and therefore they are working exactly the same way as mass in the particular question itself. AR stands for uh, the relative atomic mass and it is the essentially the mass number of the element from the periodic table for our purposes here. N is the number of moles. Now, moles is calculated by taking the mass and dividing it by the relative mass of the substance. In this case, the relative mass of the elements involved. Now, the molar ratio is something we've come across before in our reacting mass calculations. Uh, and what it is, is it's comparing the number of moles of each element against each other to see how much more of one element you would have relative to the others. And the easiest way to calculate that would be to divide all of those numbers of moles by whichever one is the smallest, because you'll be comparing them to each other as a magnitude of size. And what you create is a simple ratio of each number of moles of each element against each other, which is otherwise known as the empirical formula. So, for example, in this particular question, we write down the elements from the question, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. We write down the masses from the question itself for each of those elements. We write down the mass numbers the relative atomic masses of those elements directly from the periodic table. By dividing the mass in the question by the relative mass of the element, we find out the number of moles of each of those elements present. We find we have four moles of carbon, eight moles of hydrogen, and two moles of oxygen present. Now, if we divide all of those numbers by whichever one is the smallest, in this case, the oxygen to two is the smallest, we would get a much more simplified ratio. Four divided by two is two, eight divided by two is four, and two divided by two is one. And that is our empirical formula. We'd expect to find twice as much carbon compared to oxygen and four times as much hydrogen compared to oxygen in what this, whatever this molecule is. And that would be its empirical formula. And we present it as a formula with subscript numbers like so. Let's look at a second example, which uses percentages to show you that those work in exactly the same way. So a compound contains 33.3% sodium, 20.3% nitrogen, and 46.4% oxygen. Calculate the empirical formula. Exactly the same grid method is employed here. So the elements in the question are written down in columns. The percentage is written down as a number uh, from the question because it's percentage by mass and is therefore working in exactly the same way as mass would in these particular questions. Don't worry about it. Just write down the number. AR is the relative atomic mass of the elements involved. Just write them down directly from the periodic table as presented. Divide the mass of each of the elements in the question by the relative mass of the element to give you the number of moles. If the number of moles is a long uh, answer in your calculator, just give it to three significant figures in your working to give you a high level, a level of precision, uh, but not, you know, not having to write too many numbers down. Now we can see that 1.45 is the smallest number of moles. So we divide all the number of moles presented by whichever one is the smallest, in this case, 1.45. We get the simplest ratio of each 
um, or moles of each element against each other, which is one, one, and two. Present that as a formula with subscript numbers, and our empirical formula becomes NaNO2. So again, the grid method works every single time for these questions. Now, I want to look at one more example after explaining what molecular formula stands for. So a molecular formula, uh, very simply, is the actual number of atoms of different elements that make up a molecular compound. So here I have a molecule of uh, butane. This is a displayed formula with all the bonds shown. But if I want to represent it in a very simplified form, I simply write how many carbons and how many hydrogens there are in this particular molecule. There are four carbons and 10 hydrogens. So a nice definition is uh, for a molecular formula is a chemical formula that states the total number of atoms of different elements found within a particular molecule or compound. So here is my final question, which has uh, essentially every single trap and aspect of empirical formula presented. So imagine the question, the question first, looked like this. An oxide of phosphorus is 56.4% phosphorus by mass, and the relative molecular mass of the entire molecule is 20, uh, 220. You're asked to calculate the empirical formula, and then from that, deduce its molecular formula. So this is a great question because it brings in lots of different aspects. So here is the grid method to work out the empirical formula. We were told that by mass, 56.4% of the molecule is phosphorus. Therefore, the rest of it must be the oxygen. So we do 100% minus 56.4%. That Therefore, 43.6% by mass is oxygen. We know, therefore, the mass of oxygen involved. Uh, we write down the relative masses of phosphorus and oxygen from the periodic table. We divide the mass of the substance from the question, in this case, the percentage, the mass of the substance from the question divided by the relative mass of the element gives us the number of moles of each of those two, for each of those two elements. Divide, which by, divide them both by whichever one is the smallest to get the molar ratio. Now, 1.82 is smaller than 2.73, so divide them both by 1.82. Now, here comes an interesting thing. For phosphorus, it's no problem, but for oxygen, we get 1.5. Now, the temptation would be to round to the nearest whole number. Now, if we were very close to the nearest whole number, that wouldn't be a problem. But this is quite a long way from the nearest whole number. It's a half. Now, the definition of empirical formula is the simplest whole number ratio of atoms of different elements. This is not a simple whole number. This is uh, a decimal. So we need to get rid of that decimal somehow, mathematically. How, to get, how do we, can we turn 1.5 into a whole integer? We could multiply by a factor which would turn it into an integer. If we multiply 1.5 by 2, it becomes 3. That would get rid of that half, which is causing us a problem. But, of course, we do that for one side. We have to do it to both sides. We have to multiply both sides by that common factor to remove any halves. If it was a third, we'd multiply by 3. But if it's a half, we'd multiply by 2. So both these numbers of moles get multiplied by a fact, the same factor, which is 2. So we get 2 and 3. What it's telling us is... Uh, for, uh, for every two phosphoruses in this molecule, we expect to find three oxygens. So this is the empirical formula for this particular molecule. But the question said, what is the molecular formula for this molecule? Well, we were presented in the question with the, the relative molecular mass of the entire molecule being 220. And we know the empirical formula, the simplest whole number ratio of atoms of different elements that represents that molecule, is P2O3. Well, if we work out the relative mass of the empirical formula unit, 31 times 2 for the phosphoruses and 16 times 3 for the oxygens, we find that the empirical formula, the simplest whole number ratio, has a relative mass of 110. So the question really is, how many times larger is the relative mass of the entire molecule when compared against its own empirical formula, its own simple ratio? If we divide 220 by 110, the relative mass of the empirical formula, we get 2. Therefore, what it's telling us is the whole molecule itself has twice the relative mass of its own empirical formula, its own simple ratio. So if we take the empirical formula itself, P2O3, and multiply it by that factor, we get the molecular formula because we're, we're scaling up to the size of the actual molecule itself. So P2O3 times 2 is P4O6, the molecular formula of the entire molecule. So that shows you guys how you can solve not only an empirical formula, but also from that deduce a molecular formula.